What's going on guys? Welcome to another TikTok review video. If you guys are new here, you've never been to my channel. My name is Matt Sheldon. I'm a professional footballer now for Detroit City FC in the USL Championship. And I thought I would go over just a handful of videos that I stumbled upon on TikTok and give my honest review and thoughts about them. So let's jump into it. Okay, the first video is Own Your Greatness, but we have Alfonso Davies talking. I think like some kids, when they see like, you know, Neymar dribbling, blah, blah, blah. They think that's what it takes to be a professional. Yes, 100%. I've, I've talked about this so many times that being a pro, 90% of being a pro is just doing the simple things right. Doing the right decision, playing quickly, and being sharp with one, two-touch passing. That's 90% of being a pro. The other 10% is whatever makes your game special. And if it's dribbling, it's dribbling. But that's still, even for Neymar, it's still not as much is every young player thinks. The thing is, it's like, like Thomas, he's not very fast. He's not very good at dribbling, but his his IQ and touches to get away from players yeah. is on, is so good. You see all these skill shows and you see people doing all these fancy tricks and kids think like, okay, you need to be like this good yeah. to be a professional. It's all about the, the little details. Mm -hmm. Two touch, touch, play. If your ability to play two touch and your first touch is so clean, I swear, Nobody can touch you on the pitch. Yeah. I'm so glad after, and I kind of get a lot of shit for saying this too. And a lot of my videos, people are like, oh, you're just not good, Matt. Like you're not a good player. That's why you always play one or two touch or whatever. That's that's how you play. That's 90% of the game is two touch play. If you have a clean first touch, you can play quickly to the open guy and you move, that's being a pro. And obviously you sprinkle in your special X factor, whatever that is, if that's dribbling, if that's shooting, if that's defending, or that's your fitness or whatever it is. But Two touch play, so, so important at the professional level. All right, so I get the point of the video. It's, it's about cushioning the ball, but I wouldn't say that the first two examples of, of, of trapping the ball, controlling a ball out of the air are wrong. You can stick your foot up and you can use your laces and you can let the ball come down and use the toe box of your foot. You just got to do it correctly and cushion the ball. I would even say that it's better and more consistent to do it that way than it is to jump up before taking the touch. So this is a perfect, perfect real training example of what Alfonso Davies was talking about. The Sergio Busquets, same thing. He's not fast, he's not athletic, he's not crazy dribbler, but watch how he literally is untouchable with this video because of how sharp his one, two touch play is. It's, he makes it look so easy. It's almost frustrating how easy he makes it look. The time, it's the, the first touch every single time, the little deception, he just waits. If they close it on one side, he goes out the other side. If they stay back, he bounces it. I mean, this is what a, this is literally a professional level training session, but this is what they look like. It's just, one, two touch play, just playing quick, playing sharp, and playing the open guy. Okay, we got Munin Sports. I mean, it depends on the situation. Not every time do you want to chip the keeper. If he goes down early, then yeah, you can chip him, and that's the right decision for that time. But if he stays high and waits for that chip, then obviously you want to try to go low or you want to go near post or far post or whatever is given to you. I, I've talked about in the last TikTok review video, but I always have a problem when it's like, never do this, always do this because the game, it's, it's very fluid and there's never a time where you can always say, always take your touch into space or always hit the ball back to the near post if that ball's crossed in. There's always an exception to the rule. Does this happen to the football socks you cut it off? Lucky for you, we got a trick for this. First off, Cut off all the loose threads on both football socks. Then you're gonna need a lighter. Burn the bottom parts of your football socks, just like I'm showing here. This will prevent all the loose threads from sticking out. 
and it's going to look much more clean. Yeah, that's actually 100% accurate. I mean, a lot the highest level you get like the actual pre-cut socks by the manufacturer that have like the full like stitched end. But for the rest of us that don't play at the highest level, we have to cut our own socks. And that is the, tr that's what we all do. We cut them, you cut off the loose ends, you take a lighter and you just kind of singe the outside. So then you can throw them in the wash and they don't get torn up and they start shriveling shorter and shorter and shorter. It's weird, but it works. Simple first touch drill from nonstop progress. I mean, great drill, great touches. They're fizzing in the ball, challenging each other. And this is kind of, again, there's like a theme of this video, I guess would just get that first touch and play fast. I mean, this is a great drill to work exactly on what Alfonso Davies is talking about and what you see Sergio Busquets doing. Obviously they're just kind of working on that first touch aspect, not so much of like the reaction where to play, but this is a great, great drill for that. Another, another really good drill. This is a go grind soccer. From what it looks like, he checks his shoulder and I like to check the shoulder where there's actually information that you have to apply to whatever you're doing. So it looks like if it's blue, he bounces the ball back. And if it's yellow, he takes his touch outside of the yellow cone. If it's orange, he takes his touch to the orange cone. So I like that. Cause a lot of times people will just, you know, for drills and just check their shoulder and they're just kind of checking their shoulder to check their shoulder. And it's kind of more of just going through the motion. I really like when there's actual like a stimulus that you have to look, receive the information of what you're seeing and then apply it to what you're doing. It just seems more game realistic to me. So really good drill. Exercises you must do as a winger. I, I, I get why people do this. You'll see this all the time. Like this is a workout for a winger, a workout for a center back. I think it's kind of funny because I personally, I've never been on a team where the workout has changed based off of your position. Sometimes I see sometimes the fitness changes a little bit. Fullbacks need to do a little bit more longer runs at higher intensity with a little bit longer break. Center mids might do a little bit more constant running. Center backs might not have to run as far or as, as intense, but I've never seen a workout change for your position because majority of the time, the goal of the workout is just to keep you fit, keep you strong, keep you healthy and improve your speed and athleticism, which is needed across every single position. So I always think like, why would this workout be specifically for a winger versus a fullback or a center mid? These are great exercises, all great exercises, but every single player on the field could do these exercises. It doesn't have to be for a winger, but it's, you know, by doing this, you get to make six different pieces of content for a winger, striker, center mid, fullback, center back, goalkeeper. So I get why, you know, it's, it's, it's for TikTok. But great exercise. I mean, again, great exercises. Jonah football. The difference this is gonna be between good. great players and world class players is not their technique. It's not physicality. It's their decision making. Now, hear me out. The best players make the best decisions when they're playing their games. Making better decisions comes from seeing the game quicker and thinking quicker. Vision and awareness, or scan, or scanning, which is a buzzword that you see online a lot now. What truly separates the world-class players is they understand how and when this is implemented in a game. And the most important one being knowing how to use that information to make the best decision possible. And this is honestly one of the hardest skills you can master. 100%. 100%. Like I said, again, with drills, you can throw in the scan and check your shoulder, but it's kind of going through the motion. The hard part is to receive that information and then make the best decision. And again, I mean, obviously technique is important. Obviously your physicality is important, your fitness, all that stuff is super important. But I do agree that that decision-making is the hardest skill to bring up to the elite level. And that's really what separates the, even for me, what separates a USL championship player from an MLS player, an MLS player from a guy playing over in Europe, a guy playing over in Europe, playing at the highest Champions League level football. It's not only all the other stuff, your technique and physicality and speed and all that kind of stuff, but mainly it's your ability to consistently make the right decision over and over again. And that is the hardest thing to bring up to the elite level in my opinion, for sure. Completely agree. This is how good Premier League footballers are technically. Perfect. We have a player from Burnmouth. Watch 
the simplicity of this drill. I mean, obviously there's a lot of footwork, there's a lot of patterns, but it's one, two touches and everything's clean and everything's sharp. Yellow. Yeah. Good, finish, and back in. Yellow, open. Yeah. Good. And this is a great drill. Look. Open. Really, really simple. Finish. But there's oh, like that stimulus of like calling out a color, turning, opening up your shoulder, finding the target, clean first touch, Yellow. and just pass Yellow. it. I mean, that's a professional level drill. It doesn't look crazy, it's simple, Yellow. but this is what this is what pros do to improve and to train. I don't know if these are um, pros, they look very skilled, but this is how pros train and this is how you should train. Rule number one in football, never blame your goalkeeper for a lost match. This is the most difficult position in football. He always tries his best, risks with his body and health to prevent a goal and ready to clean up the mistakes of his teammates. If, I mean, if my goalkeeper was the reason we lost a match, then I'd expect to be able to put the blame on him and he'd understand that. Same as if I lost a match from making a mistake, then yeah, it, I, I could be blamed for that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I would definitely blame my goalkeeper if they made a really stupid mistake and cost us the game. If you're a soccer player, you need to be training every part of the speed velocity curve. Here's one exercise for every section. Let's go. I love the speed velocity curve. And I think this is a really great example of everything on there. And I, I mean, that's kind of like how I approached my training when I was, was younger and I read about the speed velocity curve for the very first time. It's exactly it. Max strength from like heavy weightlifting exercises like the squat, front squat, stuff like that, deadlift. And then you slowly add in more speed as you go down the curve to more of like a power clean. And then you go into like a fast explosive dumbbell or kettlebell exercise. And then you actually go to like a box jump or a sprint for the full velocity. So that's kind of like by doing exercises all around here, you'll improve your strength. You'll improve your fast twitch muscle fibers. You'll improve your speed and your overall athleticism from, again, from my understanding, not a sports scientist, not a strength coach, but that's just what I've learned from talking to sports scientists and, and strength coaches. This time I'll show you how to defend every striker. When the striker dribbles towards you, it's very important to not just run back in a straight line. This way you will have problems to turn and pick up the speed. Instead, you turn a little sideways to guide the striker to the outside. When you are behind the striker, make sure you are not too close to him. Instead, hold about one arm length distance so it's easier to use your body for the tackle. So these are all great tips. I mean, again, nothing wrong with what he's saying, but I think it's funny going back to here, turn sideways and force wide. That body positioning right there is not forcing the player wide. You are opened up to being cut inside. You need to be like here. You need to be another yard inside to really force that ball wide. So the advice is good, but I think the visual example of right here is not good. That's just begging a, a winger to cut inside on you right here. I have met decent players who couldn't juggle. But I will say this, no matter how good you are, if you go from juggling a ball 10 times to juggling 100 times or to juggling 100 times with a size one ball or juggling 100 times with a tennis ball, you will become a better player. Guaranteed. It is probably the simplest and easiest way to get better at football. So why aren't you doing it? I would even go further than what Christo's saying here. And I kind of agree with the, the first player. I've never met a pro who couldn't juggle a thousand times. I've never met a pro who couldn't do it around the world or have a, a get in and step in and do a decent game of two touch. Maybe at the youth club level, maybe in college, maybe you could get away with not being a great juggler and still being able to be a decent player at that level. But to get up to the professional level, like I said, I have never met a pro, even at my level in the USL championship, that couldn't do hundreds of juggles, couldn't do some tricks, even if how basic they were, and couldn't play a quality game of two-touch. Whenever I see this too, I always see people bring up Dembele with that one thing. I think it was, I think it was Dembele, where he came in in front of like 30,000 people or whatever and struggled to juggle. That, I guarantee, had everything to do with nerves of trying to be forced to juggle in front of that many people and nothing to do with the fact that he actually can't juggle. I guarantee this guy can juggle the ball. But is there a right time and a wrong time to scat? 
I think the key thing is to get as much information as possible, you know, so I didn't think too much about this, but it, this came natural to me, but I, but I understood when I watched videos and clips and from thinking myself as well that when people are touching the ball, you should look at the ball because you don't know what's going on. And when the ball is moving, you can look away, you know, like when the ball is on the way, you know it's going to come, so yeah. you can look away. But when someone is driving the ball and they touch it, then you should look at the ball to know what direction they go. Or yeah. I mean, that is a fantastic piece of advice from Odegaard. I mean, it's such a cool time that we can hear and get advice from players like that. I've been taught something very similar with some of my professional level coaches that when you're checking for the ball, it's like when you really want to check and scan around you, when you know that ball can't be played at that moment. So like as that ball is being played from the fullback to the center back and you're the center mid, as that ball's in motion over to the center back, that ball can't come to you because it's in motion towards the center back. That's when you really want to be checking your shoulder. As soon as he takes that touch and looks up, that's when you have to look at him because you have to be ready for when he does make that touch and plays it to you. And again, as he plays it to you and that ball's in motion, you know where it's going to be. Then you can check your shoulder again and get information. So, I mean, I think that's, again, fantastic piece of advice. And I love that you can just hop on your social media, hop on TikTok and get that from Odegaard. Anyway, guys, that's all the videos I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like this series, you like this TikTok review series, please let me know in the comment section, like the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, peace.